Well, welcome to a new Harry's Farm video and uh, lots to cover off in this one. It's been a couple of weeks. There's been lots of rain, lots of growing happening, all the crops, etc. And also this final bit of the solar panels went in. This is a 12 kilowatt peak insulation that's gone in for the house. And it's quite an interesting way of doing it here. I, as I explained in the previous video, didn't want to put it onto the um, ha house, onto the roof, because it's sort of historic building. It's the last thing it should have is solar panels on the roof. But we have this hidden corner here, and I wanted to do a ground-based solar insulation. Now, this wasn't what was envisaged when we first started talking about this back in November 21. They sort of sat on a sort of plastic pod and they have just, in the craziness of post-COVID and supply issues, etc., have never actually materialised. So we went for a plan B option. And this sort of rail system you see here is what they actually use if they're putting solar panels on a flat roof insulation. But it's quite an interesting one because you can do quite a big insulation like this and it's deemed that it's not actually installed. Because these, if I just go right to the beginning again here, this isn't attached to the ground. This actually sits on this gravel bed. There are weights actually underneath the panels, concrete weights to keep them, you know, stable where they are. But it isn't actually sort of into, piled into the ground. And there's a question mark whether you actually need planning to put this sort of insulation in if you're going for a bigger system. I throw it out there. It's OK here because it's just a 12 volt, uh, 12 kilowatt uh, peak system. And I was going to say, when I came out, before the sun just appeared and the cloud was over, even though it's a 12 kilowatt system, it was only producing 1.1 kilowatts. Cloud, I'm fast discovering, is an enemy of solar insulations. It, it drops off way quicker than I expected. When the sun, you want a pure blue sky with not even a vapour trail from a plane, to get the peak output and then i su suggest with this sun now this is probably doing three or four kilowatts of the 12 potential you need a full summer day to get to the potential and it's not actually producing as much as i expected per day as we go right into autumn you know we're in november now it's doing I, I, when it first went in uh, a couple of weeks ago we saw 21 units produced during the day and then a cloudy day you can go down to seven or ten and i think we got we had rain all day and it did about three that turbine interestingly doesn't do much in the summer but gets going again when the low pressures scream across the atlantic and i think yesterday it did 30 kilowatt hours in a day sorry stanley is getting quite excited why are you getting so excited you're gonna spin yeah you like spinning don't you anyway so solar i'm going to do a full update on solar and you know whether it's working or not i've also got a shading issue which i absolutely knew about so we're going to trim this hedge to try and maximize the return from it but it's just a very unobtrusive way of putting solar panels in this sort of ground base on the ground like this the thing about solar is it's getting more and more economic to put solar in because of the rates we're having to pay for electricity. I've actually just come off the phone for the farm buildings where that 18 kilowatt system is because we're out of contract up there. And I just wanted to see if I could fix because we do still consume electricity up there. And the quote for the variable rate today is 84.37 pence per unit. 84 pence i mean it was 11 10 11 pence two years ago i staggered how much it's gone up and it's gone up 30p since september so it's really something to watch i'm having a right old fight though with sse because they are now demanding a credit check on each meter position and that's classed as the farm building it's a separate meter and it hasn't got a credit rating because he doesn't pay the bills. I pay the bills, but that doesn't work for the SSE system. They want to create a credit rating on some farm buildings up there. And until they can, I can't have a contract. It's just madness on the supply side at the moment. They also told me that the um, government is supporting the price for the next six months, but they're doing it on a weekly basis. Um, two weeks ago, it was a 41 pence they were um, su um, supplementing towards every business user per unit. Last week, it was 31 pence. 
Lord knows how much that's all costing, but it varies from week to week. Anyway, what we're going to do now, disappear over there, have a look at some of the crops. Better news there. Well, this is the olive seed rape. This is the lot we've drilled first in August, and then we've got another block on the other farm that we put in September. And it's, it's coming along. Uh, this one is actually growing away. It's looking okay. It's looking like a crop. You always, I've, we grow this hybrid variety of olive seed rape here. And you know, it's peculiar. This is particularly not a very good bit here. Let's have a look down here. Yeah, we grow this hybrid variety of oilseed rape here and it means that you put half as much seed in the ground that you would on a conventional variety of oilseed rape. So around 50 plants per square metre instead of 100. So I come out here and think, oh God, it's not a lot of plants here. But that is the nature of growing this hybrid high vigour oilseed rape. And you can just see it starting to take, you know, take off a bit here. But it's, it has got the um, cabbage flea beetle have been nibbling it you can see all the holes in it they they just persisted the we had this sort of strange um, season i think that it's been very mild and so the crop has been able to grow away but it also means that the cabbage flea beetle have survived longer from what i can see there is damage here so who knows the next battle will be with pigeons but they're because of the mild weather and there's great berries all through the hedgerows and things they're not actually going to come in until sort of christmas time and perhaps a bit later than that but this is my better block of oilseed rape. I've got some fields that I am concerned about, but it, I've nothing really I want to plant now. So I'm just going to sit it out, see what the spring brings, and we'll go from there. Oilseed rape is always this nail-biting crop all the way to harvest. You know, we had a terrible crop with it in 21, worst crop on the farm, 22 harvest, best crop on the farm by a country mile. So it's always up and down with oilseed rape and you have to factor in it's a break crop and what you really want to grow is the first wheat after your break crop because that's where you that's the stable one that's what you're aiming to do and that's your most profitable crop and beside me here is first wheat um, after the oilseed rape of last year and that looks really good. Okay. Well this is the block of first wheat and it's at the two leaf stage uh, if i just put a plant up and because we use that tine drill we have that uh, tine drill going through rather than a disc drill it, it's rather disappointingly visually because that coulter spreads the seed and doesn't plant it in a really neat slot if you use a disc drill it's actually cutting a slot in the soil and you put that seed right in the slot and it's dead arrow and you see these fields that are like precision being done with like a graphic pen it's so perfect the lines of the wheat plants all coming up not so with the Claydon hybrid drill because it's a tine drill and it spreads the seed in a band about that wide so you don't get this sort of arrow straight rows as you do with a disc drill but it's looking good it's looking extremely healthy there you go that's the stage we're at so yeah it's just it's quite a lot of tilt so it's probably just a little deep but too too leaf as you can see there and i'm just looking to see if i can show you that the herbicide is working so here you go this just shows me that the herbicide is working so here's a patch of weed coming here and you can just see that plant there has taken up the weed killer so it's grown away and then it suddenly goes a bit poorly and sort of white in the heart so that tells me that the herbicide is working here this farm doesn't get public enemy number one to arable farmers in the uk black grass but that also this herbicide will also take that out as well but the wheat right across the farm we planted it in ideal conditions and we've had perfect rain after i've got this lovely tilt slugs have been a non-issue this year and i couldn't be happier it's a hundred percent first start with the wheat yeah well drilled half grown is the saying and uh, that's what it feels like this season with the wheat the downside is it's a feed wheat and i'm just looking at the market the price of wheat is all reliant on one person it seems at the moment mr putin and whatever he's actually he closed off the grain corridor coming out of ukraine price went up 10 pounds overnight he then apparently opened it up yesterday crashed another 10 pounds we don't know where we are but we're around the 250 pound mark for feed wheat in this country and because of that 
the uh, egg industry is really suffering because they are huge consumers of feed wheat in the UK and we're starting to see real lack of demand because yeah people are just not seeing put poultry down for eggs and we're going to get egg shortages etc let alone with the um, bird even flu as well coming but um, yeah the high price of wheat has its downside. The other thing I've noticed is ethanol production has dropped 60% because it just doesn't make sense to make ethanol out of wheat that's costing £250 a tonne. So yeah, who knows, that's the market. We don't know what the future holds, but uh, I couldn't be happy as a farmer how the wheat looks for Harvest 23. Right, all sorts of things happening on the grass. And let's go back to the other farm. I'll just show you the grass before the sheep are just about to arrive. It's all changed here last year, I think about two or three weeks ago, all the leaves are on the trees, they've all gone with the storms rushing through. But the grass, well, it's in rude health. It's been rested. The alpacas are actually out there. There's only a gang of four or five of them, so they don't do much wandering around. Um, this field is about um, 30 acres. They wander through here with the field next door. So the sheep are about to arrive. They're just putting some electric fencing down around some of the perimeter of the fields and yeah they'll be in here for i think over the winter um, the rams come in in a couple of weeks time just once the sheep have settled and yeah it's it's a very easy gestation period to remember with sheep i always think it's four months four weeks four days so five months times after the rams have gone in we should be having some lambs running around the place they probably they'll, they'll go back to the home farm for lambing rather than lambing out in the field but um, no just a great time of year here and the other bonus is this field produces fantastic mushrooms if you look down here you can see a great row of them coming around here and, uh, yeah field mushrooms are one of the highlights when you've got permanent pasture like this and they all <laughs> it's amazing how they come around in the ring some of them are quite big we're a little unfortunately been away for a few days so we sort of missed some of the really big ones but we'll be picking some of these later on there's a very fresh one just there just popped through the ground but yeah there you go if you like mushrooms uh, and also, I think I, I have to mention, Farmers Weekly did an article on it, and it's uh, big news over in New Zealand, that the New Zealand government is planning to introduce a carbon tax on farmers who produce livestock. So the sheep and cattle farmers in New Zealand, they are looking to that. And you, as you can imagine, the farmers are protesting. I, I blame the media for this one. We have this media who just believe climate change is all down to cows and uh, because they produce methane and it's just a natural thing they do because they eat grass and purely if you're a um, ruminant animal methane is produced as you break down the cellulose but never anyone questions where the methane comes from it's from the cellulose in the grass that is the grass has formed that cellulose structure purely by absorbing co2 that's where the carbon has come from from the atmosphere the grass is just the most amazing plant and cows and sheep are an amazing way of turning grass into something that we can eat and milk and drink etc but no it's the cows and what I think the environmentalists saying ban cows are forgetting, they're actually saying ban all ruminants. No one mentions the two million deer wandering around the UK. We better get rid of those if they're so keen that it's all ruminants fault that climate change, it must be ruminants. So all the deer have to go as well because we don't even eat those. They just wander around eating trees, uh, saplings and the rest of it. I mean, we do eat a minor part. No one thinks about, well, actually in the US at peak, there were 60 million bison wandering around the United States before it was there, with 30 million beef animals there today. So half the number of bison. The world wasn't heating up when there were 60 million bisons wandering around the US. It's, you know, it is down to our consumption of oil and the size of the population today, but that's another matter. Um, off the soapbox, but I just can't wait to see livestock back on the farm after that complete um, drought situation during the summer where the cattle had to move off. Now the grass has never looked better and uh, it will be supporting five separate flocks of sheep right through the winter until they go back home for lambing. So there you are, there's a quick catch up on Harry's farm, what's going on. 
the next time you'll be here i think the sheep will be here and we'll have a look at a few other things and look at the sort of the numbers of 22 harvest but i hope you enjoyed this video if you have keep watching keep subscribing thanks so much for subscribing such big numbers and hit like on this video if you can thanks for watching